Um, Piotr from Intel is going to uh, give us a, a discussion of uh, RDMA and IO virtualized devices and hardware offload. So if you please give uh, a, a nice warm welcome for Piotr. Uh, hello everybody, I hope that you can hear me well. Uh, this is the, the joint activity I did uh, together with Vivek and Anjali uh, from uh, Intel from, from Oregon. And just uh, does, does the corporate stuff. Basically, during this presentation, I just uh, try to remember what is the link aggregation and what uh, explain what, what issues what issues we, we might have uh, in that. Then we'll go d deeply on the, 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 uh, how we are going to handle the RDMA uh, offloading for the line link aggregation and uh, uh, access to the virtual machines. And finally, they will have some time for the discussion, questions, and you know, regular stuff. So just to uh, remember, link aggregation is, is provide you uh, separate, uh, using multiple physical links uh, between the host and the and the switch, and it's uh, provided for the uh, uh, fault tolerance, so active backup. If one link uh, fail, another one can be used seamlessly to the uh, application in the upper stack. Uh, or for the active active uh, uh, configuration, you can utilize bot links, so we increase the, uh, the overall uh, capa capability of the uh, connection without uh, changes in the upper stack. And in the Linux, it's implemented uh, mostly in the software. So you have the uh, bonding driver. So this is the software entity which sits between the uh, TCP IP uh, stack and the uh, LAN driver, which is specific for the, uh, for the given NIC. So it is done that, that way that, that the bonding driver does talk to the uh, to, to both uh, uh, or multiple, uh, multiple NIC drivers and uh, uh, NIC drivers might uh, know about the bonding, might, but might not. And uh, the, the, the way of communication is that the bond, bond driver sends some notifications uh, using NetDev notifications, and the uh, uh, NIC driver might, uh, might adjust its activity uh, to that, or might not. Most of the uh, NIC drivers uh, does not. So this, this scheme is pretty much generic, and uh, uh, you can do the uh, link aggregation between, uh, between uh, two ports on the same NIC, but you can also do the uh, link aggregation between uh, two, NIC, two different NICs or two ports from the different, uh, different uh, uh, NIC. So it's fine. It works uh, for many cases for a long time. So what's the, so what is the problem? Okay. The problem is that uh, when we are uh, talking about the uh, hardware acceleration, so the uh, first thing is the hardware accelerated RDMA. So even if on the wire the RDMA packets looks like another, uh, another uh, IP uh, packets, in, in fact, on the driver, they are accelerated. And they are accelerated in that, that way that, that hardware queues uh, are uh, accessed directly or almost directly by the application. So the, the packets are not, uh, are not going through the regular uh, TCP stack. So somehow they are parallel to the, to the, to the bonding drivers. So even if we have the, the, the setup with the uh, bond drivers and you have the link aggregation for, for, for the LAN traffic, in the same time, the, if you are using on the same installation RDMA, RDMA is not affected by that in the regular situation. So you don't have the, uh, even such uh, basic uh, functionality like, like the fault tolerance for the RDMA traffic. So it might affect, for example, your storage application. And of course, also you cannot boost the performance uh, by uh, linking, by, by using multiple uh, links for the RDMA. So you are losing cer certain uh, capacity, which are important for the applications using the RDMA. And also this is for the virtual machine. So virtual machine, machines uh, uh, directly or indirectly using uh, SRIOV and uh, uh, virtual functions, this is the efficient way of uh, talking uh, with the hardware without the ne unnecessary uh, delay. So th this, is, this is fine, but 
it's also the virtual machine talks to the, gets its own cues and somehow uh, work independently to the bonding driver. So there are some, uh, some, uh, situ uh, some solutions that, for example, you uh, give uh, for, for the, for this, uh, for the uh, two ports uh, configuration you provide the, uh, for the, uh, uh, you provide the virtual functions for both ports and let the, uh, let the uh, virtual machine do, do the bonding by, by themselves. But it's inefficient. First you have to expose the, uh, the underlying network to the virtual machine, so this is somehow against the, the, the idea of virtualization. And it's also, uh, it means that you have multiple instances of the same, uh, of the same uh, bonding driver deciding what to do, which is the best way. So not very, uh, not very well solution. So, so we have also the problem with the, uh, uh, how to provide the seamless access to the uh, uh, link aggregation for the, uh, for the virtual machines. And here we have the typical uh, typical uh, configuration of the of the of the multiple multi-port NIC. NIC. Here there's uh, two ports, but maybe more. And each port has uh, uh, its own queues. It, each port it's uh, it's exposed to the uh, upper layer like a separate physical function, which separate virtual functions. And its port also internally consists. Uh, uh, single uh, virtual Ethernet bridge. So, you from the from the upper side, upper uh, upper, upper layers, it looks like a two two nicks, even if physically it's, it's one. So, how we are going to to, uh, to to somehow handle that? We are going to implement uh, a, a very beginning active backup uh, solution uh, for the link aggregation and uh, for, the, for the RDMA and for the virtual functions. And the, the idea is just to, uh, instead of you know of creating brand new hardware, we will uh, just uh, uh, handle most of this, uh, all, all, all the stuff in the software and uh, with some small changes in the underlying hardware and, and firmware. And the, the, so the, the concept is, is, is generic, so, uh, so uh, you can uh, use it in uh, multiple uh, hardware drivers, but the details like which operation or I, I'm calling there, of course, they are, they are, uh, uh, they are uh, hardware specific. But this, this approach does not need to, 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 change, uh, to change anything uh, above, the, above the, the driver, so it's specific for the, uh, the particular, uh, particular uh, NIC. So let me, let me go uh, to the uh, detail, uh, detail, uh, detail uh, solution. Here's a pretty uh, busy slide, basically, this is the situation when we have the link aggregation uh, configured and it's become, before the failover, green is active, uh, red is, uh, is, uh, is backup currently. So first of all, for the RDMA, we allocate the, uh, the RDMA queues only from the active uh, physical function. The uh, uh, backup is uh, queues, resources from the backup queues are not used. I will uh, go back to that uh, later, whether we, we can reuse it or not. And so the LAN, LAN connection is uh, like, uh, like, la, 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 uh, done pre like previously. So we have two uh, NIC drivers uh, working for both uh, physical functions. One is working like an active, one is working like a back backup bonding driver. It's, uh, is uh, exposing a single uh, logical interface back to the uh, back to the to, to the stack. The management is per NIC, and statistics are calculated by per the NIC hardware ex exposed via the uh, NIC interface uh, to the bonding driver and up to the uh, to the stack. And so the LAN traffic is handled exactly the same, but there is a change. So for, on the 
without the, those changes, we have two virtual bridges. Right now, we have one single virtual bridge. And of course, into the, this virtual bridge, we have some, uh, have to program some rules. So the traffic received on port uh, zero will go to the hardware resources allocated for the physical, uh, uh, physical function zero. And uh, something would go for the port one. It's handled by the, uh, by the hardware uh, queues uh, for the port. Uh, for the uh, port one, so it looks uh, looks like uh, almost like uh, like uh, in the regular uh, configuration. And then let's see how it's uh, what happens if we have a, a failover. So let's let's uh, let's assume that port zero fail, and so it was detected. Uh, bonding driver detected basic, uh, ba based on the, the regular methods like uh, timeout, like pings. And uh, so the bonding driver tells the LAN drivers, uh, underlying LAN drivers, okay, you are no longer the, uh, the, the, the backup uh, driver, you are the active one. You are no longer the active one, you are ba backup. And by, this is done by the, by the notification. So what have to be uh, done for the transmission part of you? We have uh, for the transmission part, we have to reconfigure the, uh, the, the scheduling. So the, for the land traffic is going via the land, land traffic is going via the new NIC port. So you don't need to, to change anything. But the RDMA traffic after is, is still going via the regular uh, uh, queues from the port zero. So. What we have to do, we, we, we don't want to change, touch the queues itself, because it means that you have to uh, touch the application, so we'll, the, the, the session will be broken and the, the, the loss of the connectivity will, will take forever. So what we are going to change, we are not going to change the hardware, uh, the hardware queues, hardware queues are the same, but we are going to change the way how we are scheduled the, the traffic from those queues. So previously it was scheduled by port zero. Right now, we are moving that from uh, scheduling mechanisms of scheduling three for port zero to the scheduling mechanisms for port one, all traffic. So it's, it's, uh, 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 it's doable and it means that, that after a short period of the tra uh, tra uh, traffic uh, disruption, the same traffic without, uh, will, will, will go via the port, uh, uh, new port one, which is the, the new active port. Okay, so this is the, this was the transmission part and there's a receiving part. It is uh, basically a little bit a simplification, but as, 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 as you remember, we create a single, uh, single uh, virtual bridge for both ports. So what we have to do right now, we have to change the uh, switch rules so the uh, traffic receive it for the, uh, for the port one, the land traffic will go to the uh, NIC uh, NIC driver for the, for the uh, physical function one. But in the same time, the RDMA traffic is not re redirected. The RDMA, RDMA traffic from the port one go to the old uh, receiving uh, queues uh, for the, uh, for the uh, RDMA. And we have also to take care that, that, that the, the control traffic uh, like uh, LLDP is uh, receiving on the, on, on the, on the right ports. So this, and everything is done under the control of the, of the, of the bonding driver. Uh, all right, so let's move forward. One thing which uh, I'm not sure whether you, 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 you realize it. I'm cl say, clearly saying, okay, I'm going to uh, schedule the, uh, the queues which belongs to one physical function over the port which belongs to the, uh, another physical function. So somehow it breaks the, the, at least the logical separation between those two physical functions. Of course, internally, the hardware is, uh, is, is done in such a way that at least certain resources are, are, certain resources are, are shared. And, uh, but we have to, uh, to allow this, uh, the, the, this, the, the, this sharing because otherwise the, the, it's administratively not disabled. So in our implementation, I have to say that it's done by the, by the firmware and we have to add new functions. So if we bond to, uh, 
or more parts uh, or physical functions together, each of them have to explicitly say, okay, I'm going to be bound or to share resources with another, another physical function. So if all uh, links uh, uh, or all physical functions are agree on that, the, the sharing is, is started and you can move from one, uh, well, you can move the, uh, the queues belongs to one physical function to be scheduled to the part which is uh, formally belongs to another physical function and vice versa. Otherwise, it's, uh, if not all, uh, all physical functions agree on that, it means that there might be some, uh, uh, some security problems. It's not, uh, it's not allowed. Uh, okay, so what's about the virtual functions? Virtual functions expose it, uh, uh, it, it gives you the, you know, the, uh, the the illusion of a single uh, single nick for the virtual machine. You can either pass through it to the virtual machine, but uh, or even if you handle it in the hypervisor and use some software interface uh, to the uh, uh, to the virtual machine, anyway, you are using the, the hardware acceleration and separation uh, and, and, and separation. But the virtual functions are mapped to the uh, certain physical functions, which is mapping to the certain uh, certain uh, certain uh, port. In order to uh, in order to make it uh, uh, to use the bonding driver, we can actually treat those queues, the, the physical, the virtual function queues, exactly like the RDMA queues. So what we are doing for the transmission, we we are moving those uh, uh, queues from one scheduler tree to another scheduler tree. On the receiving side, uh, I, we are redirecting traffic received from the backup port back to the uh, to the original queues in case of the of the failover. Pretty much the same because those queues uh, somehow are similar to to the RDMA queues on a certain level of, of, of abstraction and a certain level of hardware management. Uh, it, and everything is done by the physical driver, even if the uh, virtual, uh, virtual machine talks to the virtual function driver, inter in internal implementation is such a way that the, 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 the f virtual, uh, virtual function driver communicates uh, its request like the uh, Q allocation or Q behavior to the physical uh, physical function driver. So physical function driver, if it's not using the uh, virtual function uh, queues, know about them. So in case of the failover, when the bonding driver tells the uh, NIC driver, okay, there's a failover, the physical uh, function driver can do this, uh, those uh, uh, reconfiguration without uh, uh, without anything. And the Still, the, the, uh, the virtual function driver running on the VM does not need to know anything about uh, that. You, some some uh, pair packets dropped will be probably observed, but uh, shouldn't be, uh, the, 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 the shouldn't be a very, very long time of the, for the disruption. Okay, so the, this is what I already described. So everything behaves exactly the same or almost exactly the same like for the RDMA. And what is the difference? So the difference is, let me back to the, go back to the, to the uh, let's say, basic situation. For the RDMA, RDMA is using the same uh, IP addresses and the uh, MAC addresses like the LAN driver. So, and it's, uh, it's quite simple. For the uh, virtual uh, functions or for the VMs, it's most likely that the VM has, has its own MAC address and each virtual function it's, has its own MAC address. So for the, how it's, uh, how we are, how it's uh, the, uh, the bonding driver talk uh, to the switch. Of course, there are some uh, protocols uh, behavior, but if the, the, the bonding is implemented only on the host, it could be done, so the just host automatically automatically uh, switch between active and backup. And it's done in, su in such a way that if we have the, uh, uh, before the failover, uh, 
the bonding driver is using the MAC address and there are administratively assigned by or the, that's inherited from one of the, of the port. But basically, port MAC address and the bond, bonding MAC address is the same. And the, the switch known the port in the internal, uh, internal uh, forwarding database on the, in here in the our example on port zero. So if you have the, the failover, the switch, switch the, the host switch its traffic and active to the port uh, one. And uh, so, but uh, we have to tell the, we have to tell the switch uh, that the, uh, something changes. So we can, uh, it's done currently like that, that the bonding driver sent, uh, uh, sent the loopback pulse packet with its own MAC address, but over the new active port, in this case, port one. So the switch will uh, see, okay, I get the, uh, the MAC address uh, on another port, so change it. So, its uh, forwarding database and start uh, communicate uh, over the, the over the new uh, uh, new backup uh, port. And we don't need in this case we don't need uh, uh, for the packets sent from the from the, uh, from, the from the from the from from the stack. Uh, so we can reduce the number of lost uh, packets. So everything is fine. But we have a problem with with with, uh, uh, with link aggregation for the virtual machine. So let me let assume that we we have uh, we are able to reconfigure our internal resources in such way that that the, the uh, queues uh, assigned to the virtual machine will operate on the new port. There's a failover on port. There was an error on port zero, so the failover was performant and. Uh, uh, our uh, internal uh, drivers are uh, reconfigured in that, that way that the traffic will uh, go via the port uh, one. And uh, the bonding driver will send the, uh, will send the loop back to the switch. Okay, look, this, there was a, a failover and the, uh, my uh, MAC address will be visible on other port. Everything is fine, but the bonding driver know only about the uh, MAC address of the uh, bare metal machine or the host machine. They, it does not know anything about the, about the uh, virtual machines. So the switch will see that, that the, uh, the uh, host network, uh, network stack is visible over different port but the uh, switch uh, don't know about the uh, moving uh, virtual machines because switch even don't know about the, that, that those that there are virtual machines running on the host they just see them some mac addresses and they can see still see it's on the same problem so how we can so we have uh, some uh, certain problem which have we didn't have for the rdma how we are going to uh, handle that. So the idea is that the, the uh, LAN driver will uh, take the role of the, of the bonding driver and will send the unsolicited loopback packets over the new active port. So as I mentioned, the bonding driver provide, uh, per managing the, the switch over LAN, uh, LAN physical driver uh, receiving is, is uh, now that it became the, the active port. So, but I also mentioned that even the creation of the virtual uh, functions go via the, uh, go via the physical port. So physical, physical uh, uh, driver know about the virtual functions. Even it's, it's managing that, even if it's not interactive, uh, interact with directly. So it has the, the list of uh, virtual machines, virtual uh, functions. So the extension is that NIC driver will send the loopback packets on behalf on, the, on, on, on those uh, virtual machines. So we'll teach the switch that also MAC addresses related to this, those uh, virtual machines are moved to the new active port. Uh, Okay, and it's uh, like uh, uh, I promised b before, uh, on the, the basic concept is so that we are using the uh, using resources 
only from one physical function. So let's, if we are bonding to two physical functions, well, then we decided, okay, let's uh, uh, allocate RDMA and virtual functions for one, uh, one physical function, uh, which is uh, usually the active one, and originally if the failover occurs, let's move them to the another, uh, another, another, another port. But in this case, we, uh, we somehow uh, waste uh, certain uh, hardware resources. And also, it's, it's, uh, uh, this approach assumes that we do the bonding first, and then we allocate the hardware resources. But what if it's, uh, uh, it, it's dif it behaves differently? So actually, there's, uh, we can extend the original, original scheme in such, scheme that, such way that we can use uh, use uh, hardware resources from both physical functions, kinds active and kind backup. And the difference is that, that the resources from the kinds active they are, does, they are used almost like, uh, li like without bonding, they directly talk to the hardware. But from the other hand, the resources from the other, another physical function, they, they are reconfigured like after the failover. <laughs> so the, all uh, rules are uh, changed and the, then the transmission uh, scheduling is over the, let's say, the another uh, physical, physical function. So it's like, a, like in, in, the min, in, the, in the middle mirror, left side is working normally, right side is, is working as a, after the failover. If the actual failover occurs, the uh, uh, left side port zero became, is reconfigured after the fee failover, but the right side go back to the original, uh, or, or almost to the original configuration. So it's, uh, the architecture allows you to, uh, to fully utilize uh, resources for uh, both sides. Uh, okay, so I'm uh, close to the, uh, to the conclusions. So in this, uh, this presentation, I try to address the active backup uh, solution for the RDMA and also uh, active backup uh, approach for the virtual uh, functions without in a seamless way from the VM. What is open, and we are working on, uh, on it right now, is an active-active scheme, so we can uh, use the both ports at the same time without you know, uh, uh, affecting the RDMA, RDMA uh, applications or uh, virtual machine setups. And uh, this is not, uh, not uh, ready yet, maybe next year. And uh, I will have the opportunity to talk about it maybe earlier. And I am also looking for your comments, feedbacks, information on the overall architecture, whether you like it, don't like it, you can think it could be done better. And more, more uh, particular about the sending the, the loopback packets uh, by the NIC driver itself. Usually it is so that the, the upper stack is, uh, is telling the NIC driver what to send and the, the, the NIC driver just, you know, passing the SKBs uh, to the hardware. Here, packets are uh, sent by the, uh, by the uh, driver uh, itself by base on the, its knowledge of this, of, 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 of the entire, uh, entire network. Okay, so thank you for your time. And if you have any questions or comments, I will be I happy I have a to quick question. So when you do the, when you move from the active to the backup, so those RDMA buffers are user space component, right? Does user space have to participate in this transfer of the QPs over to the active? No, no, no. Of course, the, during the the the, trans, the reconfiguration itself, it's it's uh, likely that you will lose one of the or, 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 or two packets, but should be, shouldn't be sufficient just to, to preserve the, the preserve the, uh, the session. But basically, the user space is not in, not not uh, involved in uh, involved in this uh, this not transaction. At all. Okay. So I have a couple of questions, but I'll try to focus on a few. Um, <laughs> We're still not talking about active active, so active backup. Why do you want everything to be allocated on one function? Why not just, I mean, if you can steer the packets from right to left, left to right on the receive and send, so you can basically allocate wherever you want the RDMA queues or the VF, VFs, and then just steer them according to the bond decision. 
Um, and I'm, I'm not clear if this session should have been in the RDMA mini session or in the NetDev because it seems like it's a, maybe a driver issue. It's not touching, not the network stack and maybe not even the RDMA stack, if I'm not. Okay, mistaken. so let me answer the, uh, the, the question step by step. So basically, you are absolutely right. It's a symmetric, and I, I try to explain it here. But basically, simple, it's easier for me to just to explain moving from one side to the other side. But yes, if you really like it, you can, you can uh, use resources from both sides and, and configure it such way that you can move it between them. Yeah? And I'm not sure whether I, I, I follow the, the, the second part of your question. Could you? Could you uh... Uh, I will refresh his question. Mm -hmm. He talked about, uh, you talked always about RDMA, but can you provide more info about which type of RDMA are you referring? Are you talking about Rocky? Are you talking about Ivor? Uh, what is the fabric of, uh, of your so, RDMA? Okay, so basically this is, this is agnostic uh, from that. So uh, we are talking uh, on that level of the, of, the, of, of the solution. We are talking about the, the, about the, the, the queues which are moved uh, from uh, one scheduler to another scheduler. Or we are talking about the uh, uh, received packets from one, one, pa one uh, uh, one port versus another port, and I'm, I'm not talking about the about the uh, the protocol itself because it's uh, done, let's say, before or after, depending on the, on the direction. So I wouldn't mm, like. Not to. in all RDMA devices, Ethernet uh, exist, uh, and not in all RDMA traffic uh, fabrics uh, Mac is is available. So you should def you should talk about fabric, you cannot uh, disconnect uh, fabric at all. The second question is, uh, is uh, related to a to the second flight, fi uh, slide. You said that... Uh, you want me to move? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, this I think uh, seconds next. can next. go. Next. Yeah, problem with legacy solution. Okay. So yeah. that, uh, hardware DMA doesn't work with luck. Did you take a look on MLX5 implementation? Uh, okay, maybe this chance. is, so maybe this is, this is too, too, too strong, not always, but so the, let's say the hardware RDMA does not uh, work uh, directly with th this solution, the bonding, the bonding, sol uh, bonding solution. You have, you, there are some, uh, some solution already available on the market, like you mentioned, uh, that, uh, but uh, the, it is not, uh, the, okay, that's uh, done, not done in the, in the bonding drive, in the basic, uh, you have to do something uh, b uh, below that. Yes, we are doing it uh, in Ethernet driver, mm -hmm. just because uh, a RDMA, it's a buffer, it's the one who is controlling its RDMA device, uh, because mm -hmm. bonding is performed on IB device and not on NED device. Uh, yes, implementation itself is performed inside net device. Mm -hmm. Just too easy. That's mm -hmm. also I'm not so excited to see this slide. Uh, let's say so. All right, work. I understand your point. Maybe it's, uh, the, the message is too strong, uh, but but the idea is basically that. I, I, uh, that that that, uh, that the, the kind software solution itself is not sufficient. You have to do uh, some uh, uh, something more, like you mentioned, or like I present pre present present for, for that. Right. Thank you for the comment. So you made the comment that you're going to leave the generic part alone you're going to leave the driver alone, and you're going to modify the firmware. If you look at this community, we've got complete control of the generic part. We've got complete control of the driver. The firmware is just a black blob to us. We have no control over whatsoever. So you need a slide in there saying why you decided to change the hardest thing to change. All right. So, uh I think that the, the, the most uh, most uh, important things is, is that one. So the currently, even if you have multiple parts, uh, Nick, the uh, 
most of the vendors, at least what I know, they, uh, we exposed each, uh, each port like a separate physical function, yeah? even if it's on the same, on the same hardware. Yeah? So, and the, 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 the physical function, it means that it gives you at least the logical separation between resources. And if you would like to move the traffic from one port to another port, it means that you have to at least to, to move part of the resources. I mean, the, 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 the queue belongs to the one physical function to another, uh, uh, an, another physical function. So uh, at least this, if you have the proper and, uh, implementation of, of the, of the, and separation of physical function, you have to change it. And I'm not, I'm, sorry, I'm not saying this is the, uh, that the, the entire implementation is, uh, is, is generic. The concept is more or less generic, how you are exactly going to implement and what exactly you have to implement, you change it in, in your uh, hardware, firmware, or whatever is belong the, belong the, uh, the drivers, it's up to the, up to the, up to the, up to the solution on that. So this is not the, the, the solution will, uh, and the exact solution will not uh, work for everyone, but the, the concept I hope that might be inspired for. Uh, I, I, I kind of think, like, when I think about this situation, it's kind of like you're in this dead end because the RDMA stuff went around all the generic code and it's bypassing everything and the only thing that manages both sets of packet paths is that damn firmware that's in the card. And that's why this problem exists the way that it does. <coughs> Whoa. So, so I think within the constraints of the current software model we have, this may be a viable solution, but I think it comes back to, really boils down to both what David and Andrew said, is that if we had a better model, if, if we didn't represent the two ports as two separate PFs, which bears little relationship to what the hardware does these days, then we might be able to explore a better model, and maybe that's a conversation worth, worth having but perhaps the, 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 what's being proposed here is, is, is more constrained. It's, it's to basically work within the current model. Um, so I think from that point of view, it's kind of reasonable. Uh, you might be aware that there has been work done on alternate models, like what, well, it's a misnomer, but what turned, switch dev turned into. And in this case, we can represent things differently and it doesn't solve this particular problem, but it is related, we have solved a related bonding problem using this without uh, no RDMA. Um, and also I just mentioned that not all cards model um, or necessarily model have this PF to port model. That's true. So what I have to say, I somehow agree that from the, I, I can only speak from the Linux point of view. Yeah, I, I, I really agree on that. So this model of separation is not necessarily very uh, nice, especially you can, you can still, you can see both drivers in the kernel. But also, but we have also to a uh, uh, problem of, you know, of, uh, of the uh, legacy uh, other operating system. So it's, that, that's why even if I, uh, I consider the doing like, like, like you mentioned, basically we stick with that model because we would like to, to, to fight with the link aggregation, not with the entire, uh, you know, the model, how we are representing parts for the, uh, uh, for the operating system, for multiple uh, operating systems. Um, as you mentioned, as you mentioned, a big reason for uh, bonding is uh, to provide redundancy and, and failover. Uh, if I want a real redund full redundancy in a configuration, I would use two different cards and would not use the two ports that are on the same card plugged into the same slot of the machine. Do you have any ideas how you could provide bonding for virtual functions as RIUV or even RDMA if the ports are on two different cards? So I don't have the, the answer for the hardware resource because there are two cards. So it might, even if they are from the same vendor, it might be from you know, different versions. I, 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 I think that for the virtual machine, you might consider doing something in the, in, in the uh, hypervisor level and deliver the software interface to the <coughs> virtual machine. There's other topics on that. But I cannot see, don't know, clear, clear part of, of you know, using the hardware accelerator 
you know, definitely bonding to the one hardware, and at the same time, they have the, the luxus of multiple hardware cards, hardware resources. I think you just beat me to both my comments, actually. Uh, yeah, the first thing I was going to say is that, particularly in an active backup configuration, one thing most end users like to do with bonding is provide redundancy not only towards network path failures, but towards hardware failures. And this seems to necessitate the use of a single card. Um, regarding bonding for VMs, uh, we actually do have a mechanism in the kernel to do that, uh, that Fastabend and I did a few years ago, Ethernet stations, whereby you can allocate a certain subset of queues from a card and create an Ethernet interface with those that you can then pass into a VM and bond there directly uh, so that you can aggregate bonds across multiple VMs in that way, which is perhaps not as elegant at this, but functional. Did you have multiple Macs, you, you unicast Macs? Yeah. Okay, I see. Or you have that option. Um, can I ask a quest quick question to the guys? Sure, as well? no problem. Uh, can you do LACP bonding w over with virtual functions then? With so it's not virtual functions. Sorry. I'll be quick, I promise. It's not virtual functions specifically. It's queue allocation towards towards Ethernet devices. Um, but certainly you can create those those virtual Ethernet devices with queue allocations and bond them together with the bonding driver that then uses LACP on top of that. So along the same lines for LACP, so in this model, it seems like you, you're at the coarseness of the port, so you're just moving the max around and the resources. Do you see any possibility to extend this to support actual LACP of the RDMA traffic with simple redirection in the NIC to the right virtual function? For example, the ingress traffic coming from the switch in an LACP configuration is going to be distributing it to both ports. Well, if the traffic is intended for one VF and the VF is mapped to one PF, well, he's only going to get half of the traffic. Mm -hmm. The rest goes to the other state machine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Well, if it's, if it's two ports on the same card and they share the same hardware resources, they, say they could essentially share the same state machine, in which case the ingress traffic coming from to one port, port zero, that actually needs to be redirected to a VF that resides on port one could actually be done in the, in, the, in the hardware somehow. Do you see a possibility of doing that with this model or extending this model to do that? So I, I can see some of this. It definitely depends on the, on the details of the hardware, so we have to, to, to consider it. I'm not sure whether, whether we can, it's, it's doable you know, without touching the existing hardware. The, the one of the reason was just to limit the little limit changes on the uh, underlying uh, hardware firmware to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the minimum. But yeah, but you are right, this, if you extend it, maybe it might be better. Yeah, so, so the MLX5 driver does this both for RDMA and SRVVFs. So it doesn't matter where the queue was open, it can be steered or in the receive, as you said, both ports will redirect the, the packet to the queue if it's a VF or, or RDMA and transmission can be controlled. Um, we don't have full entropy. We have some binding there, but, but basically it's supported on MLX5, Connect X5. Yeah, yeah, LACP support. For RDMA. RDMA and SROV. Yeah, but, but single card. So it seems like this is a really generic Problem, it, problem space. It's a, it's a driver, it's similar to what he presented, but it's a driver. So w my second question was, why is this NetDev? Why is the, isn't this RDMA? Maybe the VF is NetDev, RDMA stack, but, but it's pretty much a driver solution hooking on the bond callbacks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, if you notice, a lot of our discussion is, what do we re represent this thing as and how do we hook them up together? That's everything. That's the model. That's the, yeah. what makes everything work. And yeah, yeah. I'm a very interesting concept for here is what do we do with the um, uh, ECMP? There it's. Uh, what, do, what do you iterate over, and how do you do it? I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming.